Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How They Do That. This week we have an amazing photographer, his name is Seishu. He is a documentary wedding photographer serving multi multicultural, ethnic, and interfaith clients. His name is Seishu again. Seishu, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, it's great to be here with you, Mark. Awesome. Well, I actually got to hang out with Seishu last year in New York, and he's an awesome guy. Well, first of all, Seishu, um, tell us a little bit about what it means to be a photographer who is serving multicultural, ethnic, and interfaith clients. What does that mean? Well, I think it's fairly clear, um, you know, from the description of the word multicultural, there are two different cultures. Couples are either, uh, you know, from India or from uh, Bangladesh or uh, they're from the U.S. but marrying somebody who is Indian. Um, either way, you know, it's, it's couples who are clearly uh, from two different cultures. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it, makes, it makes for a very colorful event. Yeah, and we've been looking at your wedding photography here in the studio. I just love some of this stuff. Specifically, you have some images that stand out to me. Um, things like some shoes with a, a bunch of extension cords or the henna on some of the bride's hands um, or one of the shots that I really, really love are a bunch of notes that are hung on the wall. So tell us about those small details that you shoot. Why do you shoot those? Well, I think when it comes down to it, uh, you know, a, a bride and a groom want to remember their wedding images um, uh, like, like uh, you know, a, a guest would have experienced it. And, you know, these kinds of things have, have meaning to them. You know, the, the lists that uh, brides make, you know, ahead of uh, time or, you know, the, the shoes, for instance, has a story behind it where, you know, it's the groom's shoes and uh, typically in a North Indian wedding, uh, the groom's shoes are quote unquote stolen and held for ransom by the, the bride side and when the groom is about to leave he's asked to pay that ransom uh, and it's a little bit of a game but you know I just felt that kind of an interesting uh, mi mix of you know uh, these these rather industrial wires next to the next to the groom's shoes which are left unattended and I was like wow you know why would they do that um, and I just found the colors and the and the composition just so arresting that I, f I felt I had to take a picture, you know. Um, and the same goes for uh, the other detail shots. I mean, I think details sort of tie images together rather nicely for, for a, a client, you know, for, for a couple uh, looking at uh, wanting to create an album for themselves, for instance. I totally agree. In fact, a lot of times when we talk to uh, clients after they see their wedding photos, this is probably true of you, uh, they see things that they never saw at their wedding because of that, and I think you've captured those details perfectly. So let me ask you about something else. Um, you have such a, a, a well-defined uh, style of photography. How do you approach a wedding? Can you describe, uh, you know, from the very first time you meet your clients all the way through the wedding and the post-production, sort of what is your workflow and how do you do that storytelling? Well, when it comes to when it comes to the approach, um, you know, my background is in photojournalism. I wanted to be a, a newspaper and a, a magazine photographer. I mean, I had dreams of working for National Geographic, of course, uh, like all all other photographers, right? Um, but it, when it when it comes down to a couple's day, you know, even even that day could be uh, described rather beautifully in a, in a story format. And um, you know, when I when I approach my clients and I tell them. You know, this is what my background is, and this is how I uh, how I'm going to photograph your wedding. They're mostly very uh, very open to it because, you know, these are very uh, uh, very very busy people, and uh, the event is very very hectic for them, and probably very stressful as well at some point. And the last thing they want is somebody directing them uh, throughout the day. You know, and that's just my 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 clients. I mean, you know, you know, it's not like. Uh, all couples are like that. Some couples don't mind being photographed and posed uh, throughout the day, but uh, the couples who um, I attract uh, as my clients, uh, they want me to just sort of be an observer and a documentarian and photograph the event as it's happening. I mean, there's more power to that, and they, the, the moments are real, and they feel like they are reliving the day because of the images being so honest. Absolutely, and it's terrific stuff. Well, um, Seishu, maybe you can help me out with something. We get buckets and buckets of email from photographers 
asking specifically how to light weddings, how to shoot in churches, how to shoot in reception halls that are very dark, and how to shoot groups. Now, I'm not a wedding photographer. You're a very uh, exceptional wedding photographer. Can you walk through how you light scenarios like that? Well, I think it really depends uh, on the venue itself. I mean, uh, the uh, the first thing I look for is, of course, a white ceiling. You know, if there's a white ceiling, I'm, I'm, I'm golden. Um, but if in the event there isn't one, and I shot a wedding recently uh, in, a, cha in a, uh, a chapel where the, you know, the, the ceiling was all dark wood, what are you going to do about that? Well, uh, you know, you could, you could post a couple of light stands uh, and, you know, strobe it, you know, with your pocket wizards, which I love. And, you know, that's, that's one way about, uh, to go about it. The other way, of course, is to boost your ISO and just sort of go all natural. Um, there, there really depends on uh, the approach and the, the, the kind of, uh, you know, the tone of the wedding itself. I mean, if, if it allows for you to post a couple of uh, light stands in the corners of the rooms and bounce in, then you can do that. But, you know, if, if, you know, if the couple don't want you to have that sort of uh, somewhat obtrusive approach, then you've got to respect that. And at the end of the day, you just have to find uh, what best works for, for you. So in practical terms, though, Sishu, uh, um, what kind of lighting do you use? What kind of strobes do you use? How do you trigger those? How do you meter that stuff? How do you figure that out? I mean, can you walk us through some of the practical applications of the lighting that you use? Well, the, the lighting, um, it, the setup that I use, uh, especially for receptions, let's say, um, is to post uh, one very uh, robust light source, which is a, uh, right now an Ellen Chrome uh, pack a mono black that I use uh, on a 13 foot light stand and uh, it's triggered of course with a pocket wizard so anywhere around the the, uh, the reception floor I can I can totally work with that light um, I've been uh, you know really trying to uh, use at least two lights now one on each side of the reception um, and that's uh, it's, a, it's a bit challenging because once you, you know you've got your, your settings set for one, you know, you're going to have to sort of compensate for the other. So um, that's been a bit challenging, but um, I'm working around trying to find a solution for that that works for me. You know, in a smaller uh, venue, for instance, that may be just too much light. And uh, at that point in time, I just put a couple of uh, SB900, uh, Nikon SB900 lights, again, on the corners, uh, sometimes bouncing it off of the ceiling just to give it nice, even beautiful lighting. Um, and that's worked in the past for me as well. And then a lot of your shots for the engagement portraits look to me like natural light. Are they actually natural light or are you um, adding some fill light in those shots as well? They are mostly natural light. Um, I've rarely used um, uh, a, like an off-camera flash, uh, although it's something, again, that's on my agenda to use in the, in the future. Um, most of the ones I think uh, you've seen so far have been a natural light. Uh, what I try and do is try and find light that reflects back into the client's uh, you know, uh, space uh, so it's nice and soft rather than putting them in harsh lighting. So it's a very simple technique. You know, this is something that anybody can really do is to, you know, if it's really sunny outside and the light's really contrasty, I just bring them right by the doorway you know, where the light just sort of softens and, you know, re it really makes it nice and beautiful. It's almost as if they're standing in front of a softbox, but, you know, it's just light that's just reflected, so it's nice. Awesome. Well, thanks, Aishu. We're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks a lot for having me, Mark. All right. Well, if you know of a photographer that you'd like to see on how they do that, please send your suggestions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Or if you have questions about photography or photography related gear, you can also send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining us this week and we'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.